Welcome to Assist My Team Small and Medium Business Solutions. In this demonstration, we will explore how individual worker would work with Team Timesheet Client Tool in Outlook to prepare and publish timesheets to SharePoint. The first step is to install the Team Timesheet Client Tool in your system. It should not take more than a minute to make an install. Now open Outlook and you would be prompted with a project data source connection settings. The project data source is nothing but a simple SharePoint list that had been created and configured by your administrator previously. What you need to do is to simply enter the SharePoint site URL. and then select the project data source, which here will be Team Timesheet Settings List. Click Confirm and save the settings. Now, we are ready to start configuring our own list of projects, activities, and custom fields, which would be then available in your Outlook. In the Backstage view of Outlook 2010, go to Team Timesheet Client section and click My Project and Activity List. You will notice that there are multiple tabs. The first is the Projects and Activities tab, and the rest are that of the custom drop down fields. Here, all the projects are listed. Clicking one of the project loads the corresponding activities defined for that project. There is a checkbox on each of the activity, which means I can choose my own list of relevant activities only. However, if the administrator had not enabled choosable list, then you won't be able to choose your own. Instead, all the available activities would be saved locally for use in Outlook. When you select a project, you can see the detail of the project at this portion. For example, the manager of the CNM Media project is Mr. Kovacs. The hourly rate is $4. The timeline of the project is also listed here. The project code is P1234. Likewise, when you highlight a particular activity, the detail information are listed on this bottom portion. For example, the coordinator of this activity, faxing press releases, is Beneth. The hourly rate is $3, and the due date is not defined. If you see this new button, it means your administrator had allowed you to add new projects and activities directly from this client tool without needing the administrative install. Let us go ahead and add a new activity. By default, you will be assigned as the coordinator of this activity to be added. Note that this new activity would be added to the activity list of the project data source, which means it would be available to all members. If you can also see my rate button, it means your administrator had allowed you to input your own hourly rate that will be used for calculating total cost of the reported time sheet or work done. Now, let us also choose our own values for the other drop-down custom fields. I can also add a new client directly from this Add New button. In this tab, however, there is no checkbox option for this region drop-down list. This means the administrator had set this list to be not choosable. So, all the values in this list will be available in Outlook. Now, let us save and explore the project user interface in Outlook. If you notice, the project and custom fields toolbars are available in the calendar and task folder. The same toolbars are also available in the inspector window of the Outlook item. The project drop-down control list saw the configured project values, whereas the activity drop-down control shows the corresponding activities for that particular selected project. To prepare a timesheet for reporting, you can create a new appointment 
or use an existing one, and then tag a project or activity value from the drop down. If there are the other custom fields deployed, you can also tag them directly from the custom fields toolbar. Clicking this button will pop up a form that contains all the team timesheet fields that are deployed by your administrator. This provides you with a central place to manipulate the fields directly. Perhaps the most important use of this form is the ability to replicate the same tag values to multiple selected Outlook items at once. For example, I have selected six appointments, and I can simply click this All Projects fields and specify a project, say CNN Media, and activity as Faxing Press Release, and save. Notice that all the six appointments now have the same project and activity value. To discard a project or activity value, simply highlight the particular Outlook item and select an empty white space from the list. Once you have filled up the required information, you can publish timesheet on the particular item to share a point in a single click. You can also publish multiple items at once. If the reporting was successful, you would see that the unique report ID that was generated in the particular share a point list is being assigned to the Outlook item for reference. The caption for the report item button now has changed to update item. You can also see that there is a new withdraw button. I can use this withdraw button to cancel a particular time sheet and withdraw it from share a point through Outlook. If withdrawal was successful, the reported time sheet is removed from share a point and the particular Outlook item will be again available for reporting. Let us try the same on some Outlook task items also. Now, let us see how the published timesheets look like in our SharePoint site. As you can notice, the start and end time of the timesheet are transferred correctly to the minutes. So, are the location, description, and the project and custom fields. Also, the total cost is automatically calculated based on the multiplication of hourly rate and the duration of the timesheets. The availability of data from Outlook fields in this published timesheet and share a point depends on the mapping settings done by your administrator with the Team Timesheet Manager tool. So far, we have explored how the project and custom fields toolbars and the ribbons user interface make it incredibly easy to prepare timesheet and record expenses in Outlook. But we have only seen the basic capabilities of Team Timesheet. You can have more controls and automation in the way you work with projects in Outlook. For example, you can go to the Team Timesheet Client menu in the Backstage view and click My Local Settings. Here, the first option is about allowing automatic synchronization of Team Timesheet settings from the project data source to the local system at every Outlook startup. This automatically retrieves any new projects and custom fields that were added by the administrator over time. This is very useful because you don't have to manually choose the newly added projects or activities or remove expired projects over time. This automatic synchronization does that for you behind the scene. If you want project color coding functionality in your Outlook, you can enable this option. Doing so, all the configured projects with color codes will be added to the master category list of your Outlook. Now, if you check the categories drop down in the ribbon, you will notice that there are new color coded categories that are just added by the Team Timesheet client tool to your Outlook.
What it means is that when you tag an Outlook appointment or task item with a project, the corresponding color code of the project would be applied automatically to the item. As this color code is deployed centrally, all members working on the same projects would have same uniform color coding for the entire team. Color coding an appointment or task item in Microsoft Outlook makes it easy to distinguish between various items on your calendar or task folder. By color coding your Outlook items, you can scan quickly and tell what types of appointments or tasks you have coming up. It also helps you to distinguish between various work projects at first glance. The next three options are about adding the tag project or custom field value into the categories field of the corresponding Outlook appointment or task item. Let us take an example. Here is an Outlook task item. You will notice that when I select a project from the drop down control, it automatically adds that project into the categories field too. Likewise, the activity and the custom field values can also be added to the categories field. Let us now explore the My Reporting settings. The first option is about allowing reporting of Outlook appointment and task items that are marked private. By default, it is enabled. However, you can uncheck it to prevent private items from being reported. Preventing private items might be useful at times to separate personal items from those used for project reporting. Likewise, in the second option, you can prevent recurring appointment or task item from being reported to SharePoint. This might be useful if you do not use recurring items for project reporting. This third option, if enabled, is about moving successfully reported item to a subfolder called Reported Appointments or Reported Tasks under the Parent folder. This is a good way to isolate submitted items from the unreported ones. The next option is about automatic reporting of overdue items at the Outlook startup. This is valid only for those items under your default calendar or task folder. This is how it works. For Outlook task item, the due date is checked against the current date, and if it occurred before that, it is reported automatically to SharePoint. For appointment item, the end time is checked against the current date and time, and if it occurred before that, it is reported automatically to SharePoint. In both cases, if the overdue item is already reported, it is ignored. The next option might be useful to preserve data integrity by enabling locking of project and custom fields controls in the toolbars and ribbons for reported items in Outlook. What it means is that the project fields will function only on unreported items. On reported items, these drop-down controls will appear as locked, thereby preventing individual member from changing the project fields in the reported item. If you want the SharePoint URL of the published time sheet embedded in the corresponding Outlook item, you need to enable this option. This comes handy, as you can directly open the published timesheet in a web browser from the Outlook item by simply clicking the hyperlink. Now, we have come to the last options. And perhaps an important one too. This is regarding applying default values to the project and custom fields at member level. I have filled some default values for both the project and activity fields, and also for the client custom field. When you report any Outlook task or appointment item, assume that one or more of the project fields, including the custom fields, are empty. 
If default values were specified, team timesheet had and would automatically fill in the empty project or custom fields of the Outlook item before reporting it to SharePoint. This automatic assignment of default values might be particularly useful in circumstances when your administrator had marked the project or other custom fields as mandatory for reporting. This way, you can autofill the empty values for mandatory fields so that the timesheet in the Outlook item is accepted during reporting. So far, we have explored the member level settings and how to record and report information in Outlook. For more thorough detail, please refer to the member help manual. This concludes this video tutorial on Introduction to Team Timesheet Client for Outlook and SharePoint.